But as you can see here, Fager and Khan will soon come to regret leaving uh, leaving Pike open here. Hello guys, I'm Wunder, and today a lot of fans send in some of my best plays throughout my career, and I'll be ranking them. So let's get on with it. Oh yes, I remember this. That's uh, <laughs> where I follow yeah, the Shen TPs, and I follow him with my Akali. E. It's pretty, pretty fun play. I believe this was uh, some final. I don't know if it was lower bracket or like a... Not actually the grand final, but maybe it was like the upper bracket final, I assume. But uh, yeah, this was pretty hype. I actually remember the comps even from uh, from this point. Uh, it was I was not sure if I was supposed to take it or not. I was asking my bot lane, do we win this? Do we win this? And they were like, yeah, 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 take it, take it, take it. So in the end, it turned out good because they didn't, well, they didn't actually kill, finish off the Shen, and I could fly in and just swoop in for the kill. And uh, I still had my TP, so obviously it turned out really well for me. And I think it's one of the probably first times, because I mean, Akali was reworked in like 2017. So it was one of the first times where like a cross map play with Akali really happened like that and kind of, uh, well, turned out good. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm happy to, that this memory is instilled in a lot of, uh, a lot of fans still, and they remember Will remember uh, this match because it's well it's one of the peak i guess eras for for my career and uh, and yeah i mean it's well we ended up winning this game and i ended up popping off i remember so pretty good game for me personally and for the ranking of this play i mean i didn't do anything crazy mechanically i'd say i was not uh it was not like a highlight me dashing around i was basically just pressing a button and <laughs> took my hands off the keyboard for like a solid uh five six seconds however long it took um but i'd say it's a very it doesn't happen very often in competitive and even like i mean even Today, when Akali is still being played, it's not often you see an Akali flying through the entire map. So for that, I'd give it an A. I'd say it's a pretty memorable moment. Yeah, and I'm not sure if a lot of... I don't remember even another play where Akali is flying throughout the map like this. This is a uh, <laughs> fun Wu Buffalo. My pentakill with Rice. Um, yeah, we. I think we lost all our games against Fung Wu, and even this game. I think it's my only my only pentacle uh, competitively as well, as if I'm not mistaken, and it was a loss. So I guess I'm. I, I remember back then there was like some stats about people who got pentacles and lost, and it was it's for sure like a rare thing. I mean, obviously, right? If you get a pentacle, you more often win than than, than lose. But uh, yeah, I was definitely I joined the club of getting a pentacle and losing, and uh, well back. Then I played a lot of rice, and this was one of my rice games. For this play, I'd say once again there was not like a, it was not a huge outplay or anything. It was mainly just me running around killing people. I mean, I pressed my spells well. I didn't really miss too much. I uh, waited out the E uh, so I could get like a guaranteed big route into another Q EQ. So. In that sense, mechanically, I played this clip better, or played it better in this clip. Still, though, it's not... I mean, this was a loss, but it was also my only pentacle, so I would put it... For me, it was as memorable as the Akali one, I'd say. Because this, it was a pentacle, but also we lost. <laughs> uh, so it, I, I would put it in A as well, for now. I think it could also be B. B or A. I think maybe B, actually. So this is, uh, I think this is one of the first splits Viego got released. I remember playing uh, yeah, against Rogue, and I, uh, it was kind of funny actually because when Viego was released, I was the kind of guy that, I mean, at least the, the, what people said about me was that I could play everything and I didn't need practice on anything, right? So Viego was a good champ for me because I just pick up their soul and I just play the, their, their champion that they were playing, but also to a high level. Well, in this clip specifically. Specifically, I'd say some of the highlights about it is, well, I start off by killing Blitzcrank because he runs into me. And I have like a very good hook where I either, well, I aim my hook, so I either hook the Jace or the Callista that is trying to jump, right? Like, let's say I try and hook the Jace, he could try to dodge it. And if I try to hook the Callista, he will probably jump, right? So I'm trying to hook in a place where I'm most likely to hit either of them. And yeah, I mean... 
from what should have been, I guess, like a kind of a free free Nash for them because we are in a 3v5 situation. We turn around with a bit of luck, but also, well, good outplays by me, I guess, uh, picking up the Blitzcrank and then, and then getting the, the flank right. And we actually managed to, yeah, turn the play completely. So I think, I believe winning this game as well, and which might not have happened if this play didn't happen. So yeah, it was pretty, pretty hype. So for the ranking of the play, I would I would say mechanically, this is probably the best play yet. Whereas, well, I'm in a 3v5 situation. I'm kind of like carrying the fight alone, killing all of them. So in that sense, I would probably put it in, in S for the, I guess, the impact of this, this, this game in my career. Well, it's a regular split game, so uh, there's not like it didn't really matter too much. But I would say if I'm ranking purely off mechanics, I would I would rank it, uh, rank it S. Yeah, I mean, I think historically, well, what I would have liked to see return is I think pre rework Akali was really fun and also pre rework Aatrox, but they are also really fun reworked. But if there was any way to just like have both versions of the champs and being able to pick between both, I would have liked that. And yeah, besides that, I think Viego, if he, there's a way to bring Viego back top lane, maybe not as broken as he was here, because I believe he was like first picked and like flexed on three different positions even, and he was laneable into everything it seemed. But if there's a way to play him, he's like a very fun champion, right? There's a champ with resets, generally reset champs are fun and you can, well, the interactions with the other champions uh, make him yeah pretty fun to play <laughs> so this one is uh <laughs> is the game five banger where i picked the uh, pike i think not for the first time i think i already played pike before so uh well they knew it was coming and they thought they were prepared for it but as you can see here fager and khan will soon come to regret leaving uh leaving pike open here um it's actually a pretty close game with uh, a lot of throws. I mean, we were like ahead for like a majority of the game, but then, well, in this case, they well, were obviously in a position where they killed some of us and they started Nash, despite not being able to actually do Baron or like they should not be able to start it, but they did it regardless and uh, they paid for it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was not an easy game to play because they had like a lot of damage, a lot of CC and we will pike as a champion. You kind of want, you need your team to do some damage so you can get into the execute range. And before that, you're basically just like a, I mean, you do damage and you're annoying, but you're like a CC champ for the most part and like a setup champ. There were games where, or like uh, times in this game where even though I had a lot of gold, I was not super useful. But then when everything kind of clicks with Pike, you just, well, you will ace them like this, right? And end the game off of it. Oof. Okay, so I think... Uh, well, this play is them doing uh, Baron and uh, getting punished for it. I'd say this game as a whole, I would probably put it on, on like the highest tier because well, this was game five. I locked in Pike and I was kind of smurfing in the early game. Like I remember roaming mid a lot of times, like setting up a lot of kills. Yeah, I mean, I basically set up a big gold lead for my team or in with the with my team's help, of course. And yeah, I, Pike used like was a very successful pick for us during MSI and probably one of the main contributors if you have to just look at a specific champion to us having so much success and ending up winning the entire event right so I'd say for for me this is probably like one of the highlights of of my career and I would put in the highest rank <laughs> yeah I, I think I remember uh looking at the stats on some of the of the websites about solar queue and uh Pike had like a went from like being played like sub 1% of the games to having like a 3% play rate or something. So it went up like 2-3% just like based off of MSI alone, right? And I mean, probably a huge contributor is just yeah, me, like me playing it and having success with it. But I believe shortly after they decided to uh, nerf it completely to the ground. Like uh, back then, Pike, I remember his Q and his... Uh, and his E could do like damage to the wave, which is of course like a very good thing for Elena to have, to, to have a lot of wave clear. And then they gutted it and uh, it no longer does any damage if you E through the wave or, or, or something in the likes of that. 
I mean, this play, uh, yeah, this play is probably the most, the play that is being referenced the most when uh, when people talk about like McGregor's outplaying tower dives, like everything just goes together. Um, I mean, there's a there's a share of luck and skill in this clip, of course, like every outplay usually happens because of some kind of misplay from the from the opponents right and well in this clip i'm in a position where i'm full hp and they are playing renekton tf which is i mean back then and probably still is i mean renekton is a strong laner and uh, well tf has a global right so usually the rule of thumb you go with when you play is well, you can most of the time survive like 1v2 dives, well, depending on champions, but if they bring 3 people, it's like usually very hard, uh, no matter what champ you play, even if you play a tank at this point in the game. Usually, like, champions just have like too much in their kit if they are 3v1 under your tower even. So, uh, in this case, I did have to, well, they did start out the dive like very early before their Kiana was there even. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I managed to get like a good good ult timing on the Kiana E and then flash over her WQ, which is like a prediction, but also from playing the game, this is how like Kiana wants to wants to do damage to you, right? She wants to throw her first Q and then like auto Q you. And I kind of predicted that, but also I played them. And uh, yeah, I have my bone plating proking. I have my passive uh, coming in at the last second with my W and it ends up in a, in a very good play for, for us. And uh, yeah, I mean, this was against my former teammate as well, Perks, that I had played, well, pretty much in every single clip, I think, so far. I think actually in every single clip he has been in on my team. So this is the first clip where I'm playing against him. And it was also early on after my change from G2 to Fnatic. So all in all, there's a lot of factors in here why this clip is like special. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was able to mock him for it uh, for, for a long time after. So for this play, I'd say just like the Viego play, it is mechanically, it's probably on the same level. There's like differences, of course, like Viego is a lot more like proactive. I mean, I'm I'm getting stuff done, right? On the Gragas, I'm just trying to survive and well, they just died to my tower because of it. I think maybe I would put Gragas a little bit above the Viego just because of the context of the game. I just... As I said, switch from G2 to Fnatic, and I'm playing against my former teammate in, in Perks, who is trying to dive me, so there's a lot of like ego in the play, I mean, after, and it has a lot more meaning because of that. And uh, yeah, I mean, my signature pick for, for a lot of fans is probably Gragas, and trying to dive me under the tower, I remember a game where I played Gragas against Fnatic on G2, where I also outplayed a dive, and uh, that's kind of like the running theme, I guess, of, uh, of, of my champ so far. Yeah, I mean, usually I, uh, my, the biggest moments of my career is is, is the winning moments, right? Where, I, uh, I mean, we lift the trophies and stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, 2019 for sure is the is the biggest highlight of my career for just for obvious reasons, right? We were winning a lot. Uh, we didn't manage to do the Grand Slam, but I think the best feeling I got was at Worlds in the semifinals against T1. We played because it was just so surreal after we won that we were going to be playing the World Finals, potentially being able to complete the Grand Slam uh, in Paris the following week. And uh, yeah, it was really hard to like, just like get a grasp of it and like fall asleep even on the same day, you know? We don't talk about what happened in the series though, but that is for sure like the highlight of my career, just the semifinals against T1 and knowing that you are going to be, well, potentially completing the entire year like uh, yeah taking that dot i guess thank you guys so much for sending these plays over let me know in the comments how i did and if you want to see jisun rank the lck greatest place, click the video here thanks for watching